All right, I got a minute after 10 o'clock, so um, I think we could get started. Good morning and or good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's Kamen webinar, Hardening Your Microsoft Security Stack. My name is Mike Class, and I'm an account manager here at Kamen IT. Before we get rolling today, a couple of housekeeping items. There will be time for questions and answers at the end, so if you can keep your microphone on mute during the presentation, that would be excellent. With many of us still working from home, we'd like to eliminate all background distraction noises. If you have any questions mid-presentation, please feel free to use the chat functionality or the raise hand icon, and we'll be sure to weave your questions into the presentation best we can. We will be recording today's webinar, so if you're uncomfortable with this, now would be your opportunity to opt out. Now with that out of the way, let's get down to business. So you've probably seen MGM in the news this week with all their security breach issues on display for all to see. Certainly not good. Security is serious business, very important and very complex. How do you manage and monitor your security environment and know that it's working well and that, it, and that you're in a safe position? Well, let's sit back and relax and let's hear our president and CEO, Mr. Matt Katzer, Talk about hardening your Microsoft security stack. Please take it away, Matt. You're on mute, Matt. I guess I should have that shirt says you're on mute. But uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mike. And welcome, everyone. And uh, welcome to this uh, discussion about Microsoft security stack. Yeah, this has been really interesting. There's different philosophies on how what you should do and how you should do it and how you really manage your security infrastructure. A lot of the rules have changed and everything else. And we'll talk a little bit about MGM in a few minutes and give us some ideas. But a little bit about Kamen, for those who don't know us, uh, we're a fifth year running of Inc. 5000, uh, fastest growing companies in the US. We're also a supplier, one of the 52 suppliers in the United States for the Department of Defense, uh, for the Department of Defense community for the GCC high licenses. These are the highly secured licenses. And we're also a both a RPO in Oregon for CMMC, and also I am a CMMC CCP. So from a standpoint, security is what we do. This is what we like. And we have tons of uh, interest, and it's it's just really fascinating to see what's going on in the market. And when you look at security, it comes a basis. A lot of this discussions on security comes back from when we were doing a lot of work with Microsoft and some of the planning committees, and when I wrote my first uh, one of my books on securing Office 365. If you get the security right you really address the IT cost. And it's really kind of interesting, and this is even more so uh, nowadays than ever. So it's all about trying to make sure you have it put together correctly. Now, the MGM, there's gonna be a lot of things come out about MGM, but the interesting thing that's came out about this one is that you know the public announcement of the hack at MGM was that it was a help desk. Well, that was part of it, but then the hackers actually published on the website and challenged that and says, no, they actually broke into the Okta servers. And so they had access to all the credential IDs and everything across the board, the multi-factor authentication. The interesting thing about this, when you look at organizations, you know, Okta has a good product, but it's really designed for heterogeneous organizations. And you have to, there's caveats in how you actually have to manage it. And when you look at any type of security product you use, you want to try to figure out how to make sure that the signals, that's the information that goes from one layer to another, are constantly being dealt with and addressed. And we're probably going to hear more about the MGM if they do the forensic analysis over the next uh, year or so in terms of how they got in, what type of alerts they miss, what type of activity. But this is really brings into the stack and talking about the Microsoft security stack. Because what's different with Microsoft security stacks and a lot of third party providers, almost all of them, is that Microsoft security stack is a complete solution and it's a layered solution. And when people in the old days used to think about, well, if I want to use this vendor's spam filter or this vendor, um, you know, sensitive document filter, you could piece those things together because everything wasn't interrelated. Now, the way the security structure is set up, 
everything is interrelated. It's all about the stack. It's all about the speed of communication, and it's all about the deployment. And so this is really critical in terms of when you look at your infrastructure. So as we look more and more in terms of what's happening today, you know, the best way to look at it is that, you know, security, cybersecurity today has never been more critical for your business. I mean, you have to actually put it in place and you have to manage it. I mean, we had situations where we built out a security infrastructure for clients and they didn't manage it. And we find out that there was an incident or an event is a better way to actually look at it. And they basically, we actually went through and did some forensic analysis on the event. And you can actually see the history of the accounts being breached, attempting being breached until they actually were breached. Now, if someone paid attention, then they would have had an incident. But if in this case, they didn't, and you had an event. Um, you also get into, when you talk about security, be more critical. Think about what you're doing with your when you sign those insurance applications or you sign your take your credit cards and you sign that PCI. There's been a lot of law changes where you have to do things now. It's not a require, it's not like, oh, I'll get to it when I have time. You have to put fundamental decisions and you have to put fun, a security model in place. It's what you have to do to not only protect your business, but also protect those of us who are doing business with you because we're a community. We all have to do this together. And for us to actually succeed and for us to move all our businesses and our organizations forward, we all have to work together with a common goal. And that's protecting the digital assets that we have in our company. When you look at what's going on with the Microsoft, it's really look in terms of what's happening against the defenders. And this is a really pretty interesting slide when you look in terms of the amount of attacks that happen on passwords per second, the amount in terms of global, you know, global storage of workers, you know, in terms of the median time for a hack to gain access to private data once they breach your environment. These are all critical type, you know, in terms of what's going on. It's it's very it's very much more complex. It's much more in terms of the uh, the br the breadth is much more larger. And now we're going to add AI complement into it. What do you actually do? Because it's a very complex environment. It's not a simple task. And when you're looking in terms of how you want to actually manage and monitor security structure, you want to have something that basically is going to work. Now, on the Microsoft, and yes, we're a Microsoft partner, so we support them, but it's more than that. We've been a Microsoft managed partner since 20, uh, basically 2016. And, uh, well, that 2016, be, as you look at it in terms of what the, the changes are that we want to have, and if you look at the changes that Microsoft has gone through and discussions with Sadia, for instance, it's all about trying to figure out is how to make them best of class. And that's what Sadia's goal was. And so when you look in terms of what Microsoft has, you know, 860,000, you know, organizations, 120 companies, when you think of the scope, the magnitude, analyzing 65 trillion threats signals every day, and you're tracking information, tracking nation state attackers, and just the amount of attacks that are blocked in environments. I mean, it's a very complex and it's a very rough world. And to actually look in terms of how you actually look at this whole structure, it really is an end-to-end -end protection model. And this is where you look at the security stack and how you actually harden it. It's about the endpoints, it's about emails, it's about identity. It's what the data you have, how you actually share data. It's about what cloud services that you're using. The whole structure basically, basically built on top of each other. And you have to look at a model that basically works with each other to basically promote it to remote security. And when you look at the Microsoft security stack, I mean, it is a combination of different types of technologies and it's constantly expanding in terms of adding additional capabilities. Now, what's different with the Microsoft stack when you look at saying, well, I want to use this third party product to add in or something on that nature. What happens is that when you add third party and you discontinue one of the Microsoft components, you end up breaking part of the security stack. Because people always assume that, well, a spam filter just does a certain function. But spam filters in Microsoft do more than just spam filters. They basically look at trends and analysis. So when you replace it with another third-party product that does spam filters, 
they they're missing that trends and analysis so things will get through that's what's happening now with a lot of these breaches and a lot of these attacks when they have disparity parts of the stack it's not complete and basically you're subject to yourself to risk so when you look at terms of when we think about microsoft it's all about this combination of how do you actually protect things how do you actually simplify the environment and how do you catch what others miss and then basically structure with a solution that actually is going to grow for your business and that's really the parts of it that you we look at in terms of how this actually works and when you look in terms of what this means in terms of your security team for instance you're basically looking in terms of all these other issues because what you want to have is you want to take and train your security team and basically spend time to basically educate them and you want to build them on a set of skill sets like in our case in CAMN, we basically handle two environments we handle the commercial environments for microsoft azure and cloud and we handle the azure government environment for our defense contractors the interesting thing in our world is the security stack is the same the same principles we apply the same techniques we apply what's in fact what we usually do we can actually take those uh, concepts of standards and such as nist 800-171 and apply those standards in the commercial side so we actually have a much more reliable product and a lot of folks have asked us why do we actually do those things and handle both environments because when you actually handle information in the Department of Defense, you have additional scrutiny and rules that are placed on you. So that's type of discipline that you actually need to put across the products. And that's what we need in the commercial environment and with our commercial clients. And it's really about trying to figure out how to actually build on that. Now with the with AI happening, it's about adding AI into it, but there's two parts of the AI story. One part is um the good guys ai and the other parts the bad guys ai so as the as you build the environment and you address things and take care of things on terms of to protecting the environment you have to basically be constantly aware of what the other folks are doing trying to break in your environment and this gets in the whole um, concept is when you start looking at um, organizations that have security that have support you know security and cyber support they're different so cyber security is different than it support different types of contexts so that's the same time when we look at compliance compliance is different what again they look at different values and we need all of them in an organization and the the things that we constantly try to look at is we're constantly trying to figure out how do we in continue innovate how do we actually change and how do we actually address and add things in our vet uh, to basically make sure we compete in our case for KMN, yes we use the microsoft stack we're aligned with microsoft but also we have a product for ourselves that we develop over time called guard plus which we use to do the analysis and object evidence or the proof of execution make sure we have the environments configured right those are the type of things that you need to do because you got to look at the way these trends are in terms of the market and you have to look at not just the skills that you actually have but how do you actually expand on those and how do you actually operate with the community and you have to continually look in terms of how do you actually address this and how do you actually basically defend yourself so like in this case on this chart for instance you see like when we started this back in like 2004 with endpoint malware yeah it was just email protection very basic now you look at what's happened in 2023 and you look in terms of the time that's taken now we have generative ai with very specific security stacks now those of you we haven't uh, looked into the ai we're doing a lot with our guard plus product for instance but when you look in terms of AI, you start developing characteristics. So imagine that you're in an environment where basically a bad actor has looked in your environment, has data mined your LinkedIn, have built in, have built a language model built basically on information they collected from you and your public facing from also from the dark web, pull that together and use that as an AI engine to feed against a set of attacks going into organization that's what you're up against so when you look in terms of how you actually look from a security stack 
you're going to have to look for the companies that basically can defend and build a model against that. And it's about not just protecting today's issues, it's about protecting where you're going and what's ahead. And that's really super critical. So it's a combination of different things you need to look at. So you start looking in terms of how to defend th uh, threats that you detect in your SIM. How do you actually secure different types of cloud that you're, as we go cloud services, like ourselves, you know, we have, we don't have any server infrastructure at CAMN. We use all SaaS services. So a lot of folks are using SaaS services to reduce the overhead and basically structure stuff so they can actually uh, manage the business more effectively. But with this, you got to do things like you got to have secure identities. You're going to have to have gov governance in terms of how you manage sensitivity data. And this is going to be more important as AI is released in terms of the market because sensitivity data, sensitive data is how you're going to actually make sure data is typed make sure you have the necessary controls on it so those that have access to it see it and those that are not supposed to have access don't see it and then you're going to have to basically not only deal with in terms of cyber issues from like a bad actors but also you're going to have to mitigate compliance and pri uh, privacy risks because the laws are changing you're seeing a lot of changes in the laws in california for instance when they actually re uh, they um uh, strengthen the CCP, the, the, the recent law and the RPA law. And you look at what's happening at EU as well. Things are getting more complex and you have to look at the pieces and how this actually makes sense. So when you're talking about security hardening them, what we really are talking about is basically looking at integration things on a single stack. And the old days, you know, everyone says, well, it's better to have vendor A do this portion, vendor B do this portion, and vendor C. But the problem in today's world that's so complex is the different components need to talk to each other, need to talk efficiently to each other. And then when you add in terms of Microsoft Co Security Copilot, for instance, which is the AI engine that's actually managing, looking at some of the different pieces, you got to be able to analyze trends and analysis. And that's one of the things that we do in our Guard Plus product. We actually develop a model years ago where we actually take and how we take and develop trends so we can see what's going on in terms of the environment. And it fits in terms of how the AI engines actually work. So you need a combination of AI, but you also need a combination of um, you know physical people looking at things. And it's, and it's really the components. It's trying to, okay, you're running Defender and you're running Microsoft Sentinel. Sentinel is a SIM, so you need a SIM which is basically tracks all those, you know, those uh, those information events and basically builds and start correlating information. So you're pulling information from the desktops, you're pulling information from the servers, you're pulling information from the firewalls, and you're looking for trends and doing analysis. And the goal is to basically um, kind of make sure that you're a uh, a difficult target to hit and make sure that also that you basically put the necessary pieces of backup and everything in place. It's like the old story that you have and people talk about it many times. You know, if you're a robber and you want to go a, a bad person, you want to go break into a house, you're going to go walk down a street and you see that, geez, um, house A doesn't have any lights on, um, doesn't have an alarm sign on it. That's a that looks good. That looks up prospect, so I'll give that a 10. Um, house B has lights on it, but no alarm system. That's probably don't see people, so I'll give that a seven. Um, house three has a lights on, has an alarm system, people in the house. Uh, I'll probably give that a one. So on a scale of uh, one to 10, you're, you're a bad actor, which house you're probably gonna break into. It's gonna be the one that basically gonna have the minimum risk. That's what's happening. So that's a type of mentality that we have to think about in terms of how we handle cybersecurity. And this is really none when you start looking in terms of Microsoft Defender, it's about the threat intelligence. It's about the data collected. Remember the slide I provided earlier about the number of signals that are processed on a daily basis? 75 trillion. So when you think about the number of signals, 
These are all events that basically have to get analyzed by both people and an AI engine to figure out what is the best way to thwart the attacks, how to make sure that basically the environments are protected. That's what you're looking for, and that's how you're integrating and targeting your security stack. And then in doing that is basically the other aspect you try to look at is how do you actually reduce the surface area? How do you do the things you're supposed to, uh, how do you basically make sure you control the things you're supposed to control in your organization? I mean, the days are gone as from a business environment where you have to let folks download tons of applications from the internet. You have to really restrict it. There's, if you have a business reason to do something, you should do it. If you don't have a business reason, don't do it in the business environment. So you have to put these controls on it. And, and it's not trying to be like we're nasty ogres in the organization. It's trying to protect the organization. Because today, the goal in terms of businesses as a CEO for business for Cam in, my, my objective, my shareholders want me to basically protect the digital assets of the company. That's where the value of the companies. And as we go more and more into a digital economy, all of us have that same as we members of the organization, doesn't matter what layer we are, what person we are, what job role, are, we have a responsibility to protect the organization, protect the digital assets where the organization can grow. That's the fundamental in terms of business. That's the way business are described, are you know fundamentally built on. And it's no difference when you talk about our defense contractors, they're the same way. It's a little bit more stringent because we're trying to protect the assets from the bad actor to make sure that those secrets and information are not given to others. And the real issue when you actually peel the onion on it is there's a lot of innovation, there's a lot of investment and in technology that all our businesses have. And you want to make sure that business, that technology is protected because you want to you know, if you go invest time and effort and sweat equity to build something, it really is disheartening to actually see that taken away because you didn't put the right security model in place. That's really the key when you start looking at Defender products and looking from that standpoint. Now, the other change that we're actually seeing, and Microsoft renamed their Entra, which is the Active Directory and the user identity, is in terms of what's actually happening with user identity. When you think of um, years ago, when we had some initial work when uh, doing for some ComSec work, what happened, we were looking at an environment where the model was you had a guard at the door of a building, let's say, and you made sure everyone was keyed and badged before they came in the building. So you protected the perimeter, but you did nothing for about the inside. You assume everybody inside the organization was trusted. What's happening now is that because basically the you have chat GPT, you have AI engines, you have VPN, you have Tro, you have Tor browsers, you have all sorts of ways that information can get inside. You really are trying to basically control the user identity. And the user identity is a piece in terms of what you want to have, and that's ID governance. And that's the other factor you have. And so you now have basically protecting the environment, but now you're actually taking governance and the user ID in terms of what users can actually do and what they have access to. And that's really crucial. So you're doing things in terms of you want to you want to authorize users and then you want to authenticate users. That's a type of model that you have and that's what really Entra is. And that's another peer, uh, layer of that whole structure in terms of how you want to have access. So you have a common identity across resources. And you want to make sure that the identity is unique to the individual so that as you uh, get into an environment, you don't want to have like um, all access, a common service account. You, everyone has to have unique identity because you have to have the ability to track down what's going on. And with the configuration that you have in the environment, these are the capabilities that you that you have that you want to have and put in place and crucial to a part of your hardening stack. When you look at Purview, for instance, Purview is the, you know, Microsoft Online Threat Protection, the DLP. What this really is saying is that you want to try to put, figure out what is the risk management and compliance. And this is going to be more and more important as we go through and we look at what's happening with document sensitivity. Because you're going to really have to look at digital assets in the organization, identify those assets, and basically figure out how to make a, make sure that they're being protected and labeled correctly. Because the whole purpose of it, when you look at data loss and insider risk, 
you're trying to figure out how to basically uh, leisure people. So you may have a group of three different people in the organization, and they may have different risk tolerance and have different type of DLP possible data loss prevention policies based on the type of people they are, the job roles that they actually have, and the risks of the organization. You know, you'll have some people are more trusted than others. And but you know, the problem we have with even with all these DLP policies, and I'm guilty of it myself, we all do dumb things. And so when you look at DLP and risk policy, those things are really crucial across the board in the organization. And then the other aspect is privacy now. And you're seeing more of this privacy. Even in Oregon, we expect some new privacy laws that come in. And it's really trying to make sure that you're correcting privacy information so information is not readily just leaked to the organization. So you have tools in terms of how you actually manage it. Now, when you talk about privacy management overview, uh, Microsoft, for instance, insert a new uh, subscription for governance that you can actually provide a governance ID on it and actually put in terms of privacy requests. Because as organization grows, look at what's going on in the EU. The EU with GDPR established a model where a users can leave an organization. They got to be able to request that information gets removed. This is the type of environment changing. So you now have to think of this as much more holistic. And as you look at the security stack and how this fits in, it's all interrelated because you have to have information you need to keep in the organization, but other information you don't need to keep. And in terms of trying to manage the endpoint, which ties it together. So we've gone from the entire thing from the cloud to the endpoint. It's really trying to make sure you have the necessary protection. And the organizations from this, this is so that you can actually have both bring your own devices and you have managed devices. One of the problems we have to deal with as an organization at CAMIN, for instance, is that we have to actually seriously look at banning cell phones because we have access to information in our government tenants that we can't allow people to have pictures. Now, I don't know about you, but I sure don't want to manage some personal cell phone and block their camera. I mean, I don't think, and I don't think any employee would want the business to manage their cell phone. So you really have to look in terms of different types of tools that we actually going to manage it because it's changing how we do things. So we have how we use um, uh, mobile device management, how we put the policies in place and how we actually manage that whole part. So that's give you kind of the the kind of overview of the three pieces, but very specifically what you need to do. Now, what's happening with this is this whole part of Copilot, and with uh, Copilot, this is really the security specific generative AI. Like in our case of our Guard Plus product, we actually collect information that's security specific. So we have the ability now to ask for trends. And so if we want to do remediation, we can say, okay, what is the trends analysis? So when you do like Microsoft Secure Score, you see trends and analysis. That's what you're seeing. And it's all about trying to figure out how to actually make it easier for us to work in environments because we know we have a um, you know, a security co-pilot in our back pocket, pocket. But it's really that complexity that we actually have. So we have to start really thinking the organization, you know, do we have a zero trust environment? And zero trust environment means to trust, but verify. Build that identity model in place. Make sure when the laptops you have, like a Windows Hello running in the laptop, you have that identity integration and how you streamline the whole endpoint. But more important, when you put security in place, how do you do this that you actually increase, increase productivity and drive collab, uh, collaboration? And that's really the key. And it's a journey that we're all going to be going through in terms of setting this environment up so that we basically go and set the foundation. We streamline the endpoint management and do consistency. And then also we drive online productivity and collaboration. Now, I would like first to announce you guys, I just heard today with uh, Microsoft announced that Copilot 365 is going to be able November 1st, 2023. Now, this is important as you look at your organization, how does you got to immediately think, how does it affect security? Well, one of the um, one of the upcoming webinars we're going to have in October is going to be about document sensitivity. You're going to have to start looking in your organization, and we can help you in terms of looking at documents, figuring out what is what needs to be protected, what needs to have access, and make sure the controls are structured right. 
because Copilot is going to look in terms of the organization how to actually pull information together and make job easier. For even for myself, when I generate emails right now, I actually take my email, spelling errors and grammar are all because I'm dyslexic and I don't see it. I actually drop it into a co-pilot engine and have it rebuild my email before I send it out. So I can actually basically be more communicative in people and be more aligned. But you have to look in terms of what's going to happen. You're going to have to basically get into a model where you do zero trust and you have to be the foundation because the co-pilot and the AIs are going to data mine everything. So it gets down to, you know, trust but verify, defend against the external threats and protect sensitive data across the organization. And that's crucial to basically look in terms of who has access to what data, what job roles do they actually have? And, you know, are people to have the necessary information to do their job? And then you manage this in terms of, like I said earlier, it's, you're going to have to have identities. You're going to have to basically look at different access attempts and how you actually have MFA. You may have a crucial asset that you have that uh, you want to basically um, uh, trigger an MFA response if someone tries to access to verify them. Those are the type of things. It's a different mindset that we have to look at in terms of when we look at document sensitivity. And it's all about trying to make sure you protect information, you encrypt it, and you basically make sure stuff is classified. And because also we're dealing with a litigious organization, you're going to have to act as a custodian, make sure you set the whole notifications, the environment to actually manage it. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast today. And it's all about trying to look at that and trying to figure out how to best to manage it, manage it on the endpoints, you know, your company policy. What's the company policy for BYO? What's the default security that you want to want to have? What do you actually have? What type of conditional access policy do you want to build in so you can restrict access to known people? These are things that you need to do, and these are crucial in terms of hardening your environment. And all in all, when you start looking at these pieces, you start looking at how you actually do proactive remediation and how you actually make sure that the users across the environment, you have a consistent model of what you want to do. So you don't have a hodgepodge of different security pieces. You train your staff on one, you train your end users on the same model and you educate them. Because people, as you go through and you want to educate your staff, it's, it's you know, the, the phishing emails are so good lately. You have to train people on how they should look at things, how they should basically um, be dealing with them, and how to basically deal with some of the threats that they actually come through. And it's really, it's trying to look at that, which is the other piece you get into is looking at what software you have in your platform. You can't have tons of different applications anymore. You can't afford it because you don't know if that application's been breached or it's good applications. A lot of the bad actors now will come up with an application and have back doors on it. And there, those a lot of applications are rated on the web in terms of the security on them. And you have to really watch everything that you do. And it's very crucial as an organization that we put the rules and processes in place. And when we talk about doing ransomware, we got to make sure that we have a tamper-proof environment that's set up so basically address and the, address the environment so we actually control the environment and they and basically make decisions based on the signals and what our AI tells us to. And then with the Microsoft security stack on the E5 license, as an example, you're actually back up the Microsoft security experts that can actually go through and look at the pieces and figure out what needs to be done and basically, you know, basically act as a backup agent to and to help you on a 24 by 7 basis. So looking at hardening is really that whole piece of it, tying those different pieces together to make sure you uh, have are consistent. Tying your privacy, tying the user identity, reducing the surface areas, having controls over the endpoint to basically make sure you're consistent. Now, as you look at what's happening with this, this is where the security co-pilot starts coming in. 
and you start looking at in terms of how the leverage in terms of Microsoft security is actually leveraging off of OpenAI, since they're one of the founding members of it, and how to actually build the environment. So you basically now have something scalable. So you can actually use it, you can analyze those trillions of signals, and you can come up with the necessary tooling. Now, when you look at doing a, um, a security stack, you're looking at that tooling response across the entire stack. When you look, when you basically piecemeal that security stack, you break those pieces and basically open up for open up for holes, like what we've seen in MGM in terms of their environment. So you get this whole environment model. You have to look at terms of how you want to look in terms of AI, how you're going to actually manage the endpoints, how you're going to do zero trust security. And most important, which we've been talking to a lot of clients in our in our strategic business reviews, is how to make sure that the data, you put the right sensitivity pieces on the data to block things as you need to. So what's the things that you need to do? Well, we got a couple of things for next steps that you need that I would strongly recommend. Um, if you haven't, if you need more information about document sensitivity, we got a great blog. Go to our blog site at camera.com slash blog. And basically we publish documents up there and white papers all the time. We just put a document in place there talking about document sensitivity. So you can understand some of the pieces of things that you need to do. And then we get the other questions we get asked is folks about what is managed security. Well, like in our garden, our fortress and fortress G. Well, basically what it is, is in the picture in this diagram, you have this one chart in the middle. And this is basically, as you see here, this is the MITRE attack graph. So when you look in terms of what's happened in term, what you're dealing with, what you're defending this, this is the defense boundary. And this is what really happens. So like in our case of our security products, we build this whole defense layer into it. In our higher level products like Fortress and Fortress G, we actually add document sensitivity management into those documents to actually minimize you know, data loss and other issues associated with it. In our Fortress G, for instance, we have to look in terms of concept of a term called CUI, which is Complemental Unclassified Information, which is unique to that environment. What does that mean for the commercial side? In commercial side, it's PII or PHI, the same model used in both cases. And this is just a quick overview of what we do in our CAM and managed security product. And when you think of managed security, it really is trying to basically look at this whole attack graph and how to actually go against some standard. Um, and this is gets into a, another discussion more I for a longer discussion, but I just have a quick chart that I want to show you. When you talk about security standards, this is coming more and more important as you go through in business, you do your security applications, you get cybersecurity, you're gonna be asked in terms of what standard you apply to. So you don't wanna to apply to like the MAT MFA standard or the TOM you know, DLP standard. You wanna actually go against some national, some NIST standard that you can actually go against and you wanna basically validate against that. And that's what we actually, that's why we had Guard Plus we used to do this manually and it taken us days to do this almost every week we had a lot of folks and now we actually automate this with our guard plus tool so we can actually do the necessary have the historical data and we can actually show the object execution in terms of data and proof of execution but it gets into this other my favorite picture i have here is when i look at this defense chart for instance it's really building um the whole model is cybersecurity is the base and then you build the applications and the line of business stuff on top of it. That's the structure that you have to think about. And that's why the security stack, Microsoft security stack is so good. Some other things that we actually have, um, the webinar schedule, like I mentioned, document sensitivity, um, great one to come uh, visit. That will be, um, we'll do that in the 19th. And uh, November, we're gonna talk about CMC 2.1. We're at, we were lucky to get early access to the CMC 2.1 documentation. So that was on, a, someone released it from OMB. So we have it, but it's really, the good news for that is we're able to plan in terms of how we want to actually add incremental security roles into our organizations that we actually cover. And then we're going to do a, a December discussion. We're going to talk about how to plan for your IT budget in terms of the coming year. So quick call to actions, and I'm going to let it turn over for questions. 
you know, if you want to get in terms of more of the CAM and managed security, um, a guard is just let us know. Guard Plus is going to be available in the Azure Marketplace as an orbital item in a few weeks. So but in the meantime, you know, just contact uh, David at CAM and and also what I would like to try to do is have you fill out a feedback form and we'll give you our white paper on Guard Plus so you can get an idea of what it actually does and how you can actually use this tool in your environment to assess your cybersecurity model. With that, I'll turn it back over to you, Mike. Thank you, Matt. Boy, was that a security brain dump. I guess I was right when I said security was complex out front. Anyways, at this point, we'd like to open up the, um, the webinar to any questions you might have. Please feel free to unmute yourself, or if you don't want to speak out loud, you can certainly drop your questions into the meeting chat here, and we'll do our best to answer any questions you guys might have. Yeah, the, the announcement that Microsoft made today on Copilot is going to be on November 1st. That's the target date, so everyone needs to really internalize what they're going to do and um, how they actually want to have a strategy and test it out. So that's when we should have, November 1st is when we should have the first SKUs that we can actually make available. I think the other piece that uh, when the, the other announcement today with um, Microsoft had with laptop sixes, um, so we have, um, we use Surface Laptop uh, fours and fives that came in. The laptop sixes actually have the new neuro chips in them. So you actually have an AI chip that's gonna be actually part of the laptop. So as you get more and more in terms of security, um, you're gonna be half the running uh, TPM chip 2.0. You're gonna have to start looking at AI tapes of capabilities and you have to figure out how this actually fits in the environment. Sorry about that. Again, it's like the webinar I was on yesterday where the dogs were barking in the back end. <laughs> Again, we're all friends here, so please don't be shy. If you have questions, I'm sure others are thinking it as well. Feel free to unmute, ask away. We love questions and love to answer your questions. One question folks have asked me is about the Copilot license. And uh, there's going to be two licenses. There'll be a small business version. There'll be also an enterprise version. Microsoft's strategy is to license it across the, each user, across all the applications that user could possibly use. So that's kind of, so you get a license per person. So the good news for that is you can actually test it out and figure out um, how this actually works in your environment. The um, the other aspect, if those that are not aware of, there's something known as in uh, with Chat GPT, which is the OpenAI version. Uh, Microsoft has actually built that into Bing Enterprise, uh, Bing Chat Enterprise BCE. So you can actually have a proprietary. You can actually get access of a using the Chat GPT function as part of the the Bing Enterprise function that's unique to your tenant. Why this is important is that the OpenAI is in the community. The Copilot in Bing uh, Chat Enterprise is, you, is basically restricted to your tenant. So d your digital asset is protected. All right, third ask. Please ask away if you have any questions. Um, feel free to unmute yourself and just you know, ask away, or if you want to throw a question in the chat, that works too. Got to have some questions. And as Matt mentioned, uh, next month's webinar on the 19th is on um, Microsoft Purview, which is their document sensitivity and labeling solution. And um, if you need to hit any kind of compliance, that's certainly an important factor in makeup of an overall security solution. So um, please feel free to join us on that 
webinar as well. I thought I might have heard somebody try to speak up or say something, but didn't quite catch it. All right, well, I'm not seeing any questions. I'm not hearing any questions, so we're going to assume you guys are able to absorb all that and um, you're security experts now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and take advantage of um, down, uh, put the feedback request to get access to the white paper and Guard Plus. <clears throat> and if you um, not one of our um, uh, security clients or looking for getting access in the Guard Plus subscriptions, um, please contact us and we can get you set up. All right. Well, we do appreciate joining us today. We thank you for your time and we look forward to seeing you on the next Kamen webinar series. Thanks again and um, enjoy the beautiful day and have a great day. Thank you.